Hey, and welcome to Tech Tips with Solo Media. Today, I got our very first Nikon. And this is the Z, the six, the six Z3. And it was a lot of fun. I got it with the 24 to 70 kit, because again, we don't have any Nikon glass kicking around whatsoever. So a bit of a kit lens test. Bear that in mind when you're looking at our results, although I think it did pretty good. So yeah, let's start just before we get into what we shot with the, the feel. I, I like the grip of this camera. I don't like the shaking of the eyelets but I have that problem with some other brands as well. I think Canon is definitely my favorite still for not a noisy camera. The screen on the back, well, very bright and very useful. Yeah. So first, first time use with this screen and even now it like, it really fights you. It's a sticky little screen. Uh, it is articulating though. So you can actually bring it all the way around for vlogging and all that kind of stuff. So that's super handy and helpful. Uh, another thing on body that drove me crazy and that th th this is gonna get to the end of my complaining. Don't think I just started off to complain, but this is actually a little hard sometimes to get that out of the way when with this door here. I mean, it's sticky. It's getting better though. So now let's talk about the positives of this. We actually have two card slots. You get a CF Express Type B card slot in there, and you get a, uh, what do you call it, regular SD card slot. Now, I got a SanDisk in here, but I want to let you know that when I was using some of the features with the SanDisk card, they, uh, for example, the NRAW feature, it would stop. But when I put in a Sony Tough card, uh, it did fine. Just an observation for you guys. Uh, overall, I love all the quick buttons on this camera. I love the feel of the camera. Uh, even though you're you're missing the third dial for ISO, it's still quite a, an efficient camera, especially since you got the ISO button on the top. I found that overall, I really enjoyed using this guy balanced and you know felt good in my hand full size hdmi on this side here you know you know don't you know we're visiting canada so surprised i'm not saying a more um yeah menu system that was a little bit of something that took us a bit to get used to again now we've tested we haven't tested fuji on air but one of the first camera brands we tested while we were thinking about how to set up our channel was the Fuji X-T4. <laughs> so one of the few brands we haven't visibly tested, but uh, as, as is with all of our first time uses, took us a little while to figure out some of the things and what they were called. Like for example, the stabilization is called vibration reduction. Yeah. All right, so without further ado, let's get to some of our tests right away. Uh, I tortured Jake with some slow motion, uh, it, it, and that's a reoccurring theme here, both in the video and the photos. But starting on the video side, we do a little bit of slow motion with Jake. Now, this camera can do 240 uh, in 1080 or 120 in 4K with a slight crop on it. So this is the 120, and I compared it with the R8. So we do have the R8 here as well, so we can do a side-by-side. But when I'm cocking the Nerf gun and it's coming out, that's the 1080-240. So let's just take a look. We got it all labeled. Enjoy. Let's play that part back, right? The reaction, I think, is the best. Ow. <laughs> oh, dear Jake. He's a good sport. All right, uh, so then stabilization. This guy has a lot of different stabilization bits in it. Now we're comparing it with the R8 again. I think the R8 is a little cheaper in price, but uh, it's got a better lens on it in this case. So we actually have our 24 to 70 Canon RF 2.8 lens on here. And side by side, 
using the regular electronic or sorry vibration reduction and uh, this is just off normal and sport this isn't the electronic boost vibration or I don't, it's not called boost but electronic vibration reduction we'll show that later on just so you know but here we go here's jake doing a bit of a vlog all right so here this is off no stabilization on lens or camera. I am selfing like everybody does. Big old camera. All right, so let's turn on the internal stabilization. Okay, so now I have the in, uh, onboard stabilization on the Canon and on vibration assist, I think it's called on the Nikon. So it's standard is on. And now we're gonna see how that looks in comparison. So. There you go. It's cropped in a little bit, so I have to hold my arm out a little bit further to stay in shot. There we go. Does this feel more stable to you? It looks pretty stable, actually. It's hard to focus when you're holding on to the thing. All right, next one. So now I am on enhanced on the Canon and uh, sports mode in the Nikon. So now we're going to walk. I have to hold this very far away now because it is cropping in quite a bit on me right now. Here we go. Hope it looks stable. All right. So now we're going to go and uh, listen to the audio because we did record the audio on both of these on the internal microphone. So we're going to see what it sounds like and we're going to go to our next test. So let's go. No stabilization on lens or camera. No stabilization on lens or camera. And just to show them in a little bit more high speed, here he is chasing one of our kids, as is appropriate. So you might have seen us use one of our other kids for some of these tests in the past, our older son. He, he's a runner. So we decided to use our middle kid and he skips. You have to actually force him to run. So that's what you see him doing. He's skipping along. And well, yeah, I think in all the settings, uh, it really did quite okay. Even with no stabilization, it's not so bad. All right, and now let's look at it with the electronic Sorry, yeah, the electronic vibration reduction. Okay, now, one of my favorite parts about this camera, and the thing that excites me the most is that you have raw, in-body raw in this camera, not raw out to an Atomos monitor or anything like that. Straight up raw. You get raw 10-bit ProRes, 12-bit ProRes, and 12-bit Nikon raw. So we'll just do a little comparison here in DaVinci uh, with the raw settings for ProRes versus uh, Nikon raw in 10, 12-bit, 12-bit at our raw footage like you can see the colors are great in this we also took a, t uh, a moment to record something in analog and it turns out to be very easy to work with and again beautiful colors coming out of the analog here and then here is a more balanced um, just raw recording again the first one I underexposed it quite a bit just to show how good the recovery is in raw again 12 bit and this is just Jake being relaxing out on the porch. But now just a, a little bit of look at the ISO so you can see side by side. All right, so this is ISO of 400. This is 1600, 3200, 12, 800, High ISO number three, high ISO number seven, high ISO 1.0, there's high ISO 2.0. I think that might be recoverable. 
and animal eye tracking. So this has animal eye tracking, car eye tracking, plane eye tracking, I believe, in it. And of course, people eye tracking. But, uh, well, tracking, not eye tracking. Uh, and you can see here, with this first shot, uh, we have a puppy. And the autofocus, even though it's set to animal, keeps on wanting to grab Jake. And I kept on selecting. I tried multiple times. I tried the, the touch focus, the touch tracking. I tried holding the AF on. And it just wanted to go to Jacob so long as he was in there as you can see here. And then once we got Jake out of the picture, sort of, and only had his knees in the picture, you can actually see here, everything went well, almost went a little too well. <laughs> the puppy almost knocked me over. I made the mistake of like signaling for him and he just went straight at me, but it held, the eye tracking held on him. And you actually can see it's selected on the eye. Good job. And of course, then we had to test Jacob with the eye tracking. So here it is, the Muffin Man. So then over on the photo side, you got uh, pixel shift and you got focus shift as well as all the other bracketing settings. So here's a focus shift. You can actually set it so it sets multiple focal points. Okay. All right. So here you go. Here's how you set it inside. Here's the menu. And then this is before and this is after. So you can see it's taking all of the foreground tree and the background tree in focus. So here's the pixel shift. And again, so it's taking 16 photos and then putting them together so you get maximum sharpness. Now, one thing you can actually see here uh, in the before photo, the reflection of the trees is dead still. But because this is taking multiple pictures and even though the water's still, it's never completely still, you can see that the, the trees and the reflection are less in focus than before. But that's not the pixel shift's fault. That's the movement in the scene. So again, pixel shift is great in, in practice, but if you have a lot of moving subject in it, like don't try to use a pixel shift with sailboats going across the water. All right. One of my favorite features in this camera, HDR for sure. Uh, so just check out some of these wonderful photos that we did here. I'm so impressed. And again, this speaks a lot to the dynamic range in this camera. It's just gorgeous. So in addition, to, in addition to the HDR, some of the other noteworthy features is it, it's got active D-lighting, skin softening, and a portrait, portrait impression balance feature. And maybe we'll go over those in another video. They're not something that I use very often. And in previous cameras, the skin softening is definitely not something that I've been super interested in. But uh, just some of it looks really alien, maybe with some bride photos. I don't know. I prefer doing all that in post rather than baking it in the camera. But it also has a, a wonderful time lapse feature. So we'll test that out right here, see how that looks. cool like again lots of cameras have that but it's always nice when you have a camera that does some cameras come out and you you lose a lot of those fun features for the the new features and all of it's trying to find where that camera fits into the product placement of all of these brands sony and canon like the 
the Canon R10 doesn't have what the R8 does, doesn't have what the R7 does. So I, I get it, but it's nice. This camera seems to have all of the, the best things that you want in it, which is, I think, a really big selling point in it. Under $4,000 for the kit, and you're getting all of that and all of this awesome technology in it. Plus, it's shooting 6K. In the 4K, I believe it's uh, oversampled. It's just an excellent picture coming out of this camera. Excellent quality for the value. I'm really excited about this Nikon, and I do think that we'll be using it more. Somebody in the comments suggested that we try Nikon and asked why we weren't trying Nikon, so that's why I found a Nikon, and I'm glad I found this one. Because in the past, I didn't really want to try any Nikon. <laughs> All right, so here we have some high-speed burst. Uh, so this camera in JPEG, does bursts up to 120 uh, frames per second. And here you can see Jacob getting a another torturous slow-mo motion. But I mean, look how crisp this is. Like, just look at the, the water coming off of it. it. It just, it's so perfect when you play it so slow. That's awesome. Like, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, we did have a couple, we ended up having to pour a bucket of water. The kids used all of our balloons for a science experiment, so no water balloons. We went to the neighbor and they gave us Lake Tech gloves. And, and we couldn't, they either would break on the way or they wouldn't break at all. So this is Jake with the, the failed attempt. Yeah, <laughs> just for your viewing pleasure. This has nothing to do with the camera, but so much fun. All right, and then... Here you can actually see the shutter bin. Now, in this camera, you got electronic, uh, electronic shutter, first curtain, mechanical shutter, and mechanical shutter, or first curtain shutter and mechanical shutter. And uh, I believe what we're looking at here is the full electronic shutter. So you do still see a little bit of the, the bend, in the ball, but if you look here, with the mechanical shutter. You can get, I believe, 14 frames per second. I'll correct it here if I'm wrong there. But, uh, and then you're not supposed to see any rolling shutter or any bend in the golf club or golf ball at all. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is that that's a faster readout speed than what the R8 has. One of the best features of this is that it has a partially stacked sensor. And what that means is that readout speed is going to be super fast. It's not like the, the bigger R3 or this guy's bigger brothers, the Z8 and Z9, that have full stacked sensors in them. But you are getting that faster readout speed, which is allowing you to have less rolling shutter and less bowing when it comes to sports. And you can actually see that the rolling shutter is way more in the electronic shutter. The mechanical shutter is where you're going to really get the most out of having that partly stacked sensor. I'm super excited about this camera. And if you guys have anything else you want us to test with this camera, well, we have all the other cameras kicking around, just let us know in the comments. We'll do our best to try to check it out. And uh, yeah, great suggestion for us to try an icon. I'm glad that we did. And I'm really impressed as a first time Nikon user, I thought that was great. Uh, I still think that the menu systems could probably be a little bit more concise, but now that I've used the Sony, the Lumix, the, the Nikon, and a couple of other cameras, I'm starting to wonder if my Canon menus, which I love so much, are a little undercomplicated. <laughs> They're almost too simple, but they're still like, uh, we were trying to change the electronic shutter on the R8, for, for this test, it took me like two seconds to do that. This was not the same. There was a lot of Googling going on. Overall, I really like it. I would recommend this camera. Uh, I'm going to take it to a wedding later on this summer and see how it performs in a, uh, an event environment. And yeah, I think I might actually even get some better glass for it. I, I think I should if I'm going to do a wedding with it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys like and subscribe and keep giving us some suggestions down in the comments. We're really excited. I think this year is going to be a big year for everything that we're, <laughs> we're getting into. We have a lot more time and a lot more resources. Uh, you might have noticed our team has grown a little bit. So yeah, it's going to be an exciting year. Keep up with us and we'll see you in the next one.